Hi, Bull Bakers. One thing you probably already know about me is that I love amazing desserts with great texture. Today's video is sponsored by Colliders, some of your favorite candy flavors layered, twisted, or chopped into amazing cool and creamy desserts that are made to spoon. These are just some of my favorites. We have a Kit Kat that is twisted with all these lovely broken up bits of Kit Kat. We have Hershey's S'mores, which has everything you love about s'mores in there. And then my personal favorite, the Rolo Colliders layered, a layer of chocolate and a layer of caramel. This one is my favorite and I'm gonna dig in right now. For me, caramel and chocolate is a winning combination. Number one, these desserts are so cool and smooth. You've got this creamy caramel layer, but then you've got this bittersweet chocolate layer to contrast that. It is a winning combination. You can find colliders near the refrigerated pudding aisle. Now this dessert has inspired me for today's recipe, caramel and chocolate, one of my favorites. We are going to make salted caramel brownies. Let's get started. So our first step is to melt a few ingredients. I find that the best ever brownie recipes are when you melt the first few ingredients. So into this bowl, I'm going to add in some sugar, a little bit of water, and of course, the star of the show, bittersweet chocolate. Now you don't want to use a milk chocolate here, you want bittersweet chocolate because you want that kind of amount of sugar, like not too sweet, but then the right amount of bitterness and richness. That's what's gonna give your brownies a great richness. So now we want to melt these together. You can do that in a microwave or you can do it over a bain-marie. So it doesn't take long and your mixture should look like this. I'm gonna give it a quick whisk together. So you can see the chocolate is melted, the sugar has dissolved, and the mixture isn't too hot. This is absolutely perfect. It's the right temperature to add in the rest of our ingredients. So we're gonna continue with our liquids. We are going to add in some flavorless oil. Now I recommend vegetable oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, something that has very little flavor, not olive oil. So I added in the oil first to cool down the mixture even more. And next I'm going to add in our eggs. So whole eggs. Room temperature is always best just to blend well into the rest of your ingredients. If you don't eat eggs, you can replace them with flax egg. And that works really well. Okie dokie, those are all eggs. Now, my favorite ingredient when it comes to brownies, vanilla extract. I have to have a good punch of vanilla extract in there. Lovely. Then with your whisk, just mix these all together. This is why you need a nice big bowl because this is a big old brownie batter. So I have lots of brownie recipes and some of them call for butter. Some of them also call for vegetable oil. Vegetable oil just gives you a really moist, fudgy brownie, which is exactly what this one is. So it gives you slightly different results depending on the ingredients that you use. Okay. That's all of our wet ingredients in there. Now, I'm going to take a sieve and we're going to add in our dry ingredients. So into this, I'm going to add in my all-purpose flour, salt. Salt is so important when it comes to working with chocolate. It brings out all the flavors of your ingredients and it just enhances everything. So salt and chocolate are best friends. You should always use them together. So now in this recipe, different to some of my other recipes, there is a little bit of baking powder just to give you kind of slight cakiness to your brownies, just a little bit different. Makes them rise and gets really, really thick. So now another important ingredient, cocoa powder. But here's the thing, not drinking cocoa powder, not hot chocolate powder, unsweetened, good quality cocoa powder. This just gives you like that intense chocolate flavor that you want from a brownie. And the better the quality, the better your brownie is going to be. So add that in there into your sieve. We always sieve cocoa powder because it can tend to have moisture in it and it can tend to clump. So we want to get all those lumps out of there. Then just sift in all of your dry ingredients. And then just mix your brownie batter together. So now I know this is kind of random, but I get 
tons of questions about mixing brownie batters. And the one thing that can happen is that it can get kind of oily and it can separate. Now, that is because you over mix your batter. So with brownie batters, you just want to mix them until it comes together, until all your flour is hydrated, but then you want to stop. It's the same thing that happens with brownies as it does with blondies. You over mix, you separate your ingredients and then it gets oily. So just give it a mix and then stop. Okay, so our batter is looking good. Now let's talk about the reason we're all here, salted caramel sauce. Check this out. This is my signature salted caramel sauce on my website. This is one of my most popular recipes. I make this constantly. I keep it in my fridge and then you have it to pour over sundaes, over roasted bananas, over a brownie sundae, whatever you like. This stuff is a baker's gold, absolutely delicious. And you can fold it into your brownie batter. So go ahead and just drizzle in around half of your salted caramel sauce in there. And we're gonna reserve the rest for the top. And then just very gently ripple it in with your spatula. Quick little ripple, don't mix it too much. We're just trying to get that flavor in there. Okay, that's enough. I don't wanna mix it in too much. Here I have my prepared brownie pan. And then just go ahead and pour in that batter. Look at all that, like chocolate lava. And then last but not least, we're gonna take that extra caramel that we reserved and generously drizzle that all over the top. More is definitely more here when it comes to this recipe. Look at that, absolutely, absolutely delicious. Okay, this looks incredible, but I'm gonna stop talking and get it into the oven. Bake your brownies off at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for roughly 55 minutes or so. Now, while I have you here, make sure you subscribe and follow me on all social media so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming recipes. We release new recipes every single week and you're not going to want to miss them. Do you see these lovely big pools of caramel? that have like baked down into the brownie and the brownie is baked up and it's all crackly on the top. This is brownie perfection. Absolutely gorgeous. Of course, I like to cut really big brownies. Look at that. The caramel on top, the big, thick, fudgy center. This is everything I love about a brownie. And then of course, that crackly top that we're always going for. Oh my God. Mmm, this brownie makes me so happy. This might be the fudgiest brownie you have ever come across. Not only is it incredibly thick, but just look at that dense inside. That is all center, all fudge, all day long. And then of course, this baked in salted caramel on the top. I mean, a match made in heaven, what could be better? Thank you so much to Colliders for sponsoring this video. You can find them near the refrigerated pudding aisle. We are always experimenting with brand new recipes here at Bigger Boulder Baking, so stick around for lots more fun.